NBC, saving lives, protecting people. Hello and welcome to this special interview with uh, Rochelle Walensky, who is Director of Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. But I'd like to start off with the, um, the issue of COVID-19. Yeah. It was a global disaster. Um, what was CDC's first response when this outbreak came about? Um, first, I, I do want to just acknowledge how hard this has been professionally and personally for so many of us, the tragedy that we have all felt during this last two and a half years. So much of the work that we have been doing at the CDC has been related to diagnostics, to making sure people know how to proceed if and when they uh, get a COVID diagnosis, but also importantly to prevention and um, vaccination. And so much of the work that I've seen here has been inspiring with regard to vaccination. Um, I know Tanzania had, had incredible successes recently vaccinating a million people in a single week, which is wonderful. I have done site visits around um, Dar and, and in Zanzibar and have seen in every site the, the mobilization and scale up of vaccination. So um, that has been really inspiring to see that people are really rolling up their sleeve to prevent COVID. And I would just actually encourage the people of Tanzania to continue to go ahead and get out and get vaccinated. So what is the global status right now when we're talking about COVID-19? Well, right now we are seeing more and more of an Omicron subvariant called the BA5 subvariant. We know that this is very infectious um, and it has the capacity to invade our, vac invade our vaccines, not necessarily for severe disease. They still work really well against severe disease, but you may still get infected and have some milder disease. And that's the work that we're really uh, tackling right now. Also anticipating what we may see in the months ahead. Right now we are, we are tackling the BA5 subvariant. So does this mean that we have to learn to live with this because it keeps changing? It does, although one oh. of the things that we've been able to do is, is um, decrease the amount of severe disease associated with it. So um, we have so many tools right now that we can use going out and getting vaccinated to prevent severe disease is really a, a key marker of those tools. Um, and the more and more people who get vaccinated, the easier it will be for us as a society to be able to live with it. Okay, but we're still seeing some countries that are sort of like uh, reluctant to, um, uh, for the vaccines. Um, so what, is, what should be done to make sure that um, vaccines, you know, get deployed just about all around the, the world to make sure that people are vaccinated. Yeah, so early on we have seen with vaccines that um, you need more and more uh, buy-in from the community. And as people, more and more people get vaccinated, more and more people want to get vaccinated. And we have really seen the scale up of um, encouragement of vaccine through that. So that is ongoing. There's a lot of education. There's a lot of listening. What, what is it about communities that may not be inclined to get vaccinated? And how do we listen um, and and, um, and provide information so that misinformation is combated with um, factual information about these vaccines and, and people really see the impact. Um, on the, uh, when the outbreak of uh, COVID came about, uh, we saw a lot of um, uh, countries um, deciding to uh, go on lockdowns um, mm -hmm. and restrictions. And uh, do you think that uh, this is still necessary or do you think that the focus should be right now on vaccinations and drugs that can uh, treat the, sympt as the, the symptoms? Yeah, certainly I think early on as we were learning about COVID, as we didn't have many of the prevention measures that we have, as we didn't really understand this new virus that we were tackling, um, but we've learned so much in the last two and a half years. Science has taken us so very far. Um, we now have a vaccine that can pre really prevent people from being in the hospital, prevent severe disease and death. So I do think we're coming to a place where we need to understand and use those tools wisely so we don't have to be back in a place that, that we were two and a half years ago. Okay, so, so much attention has been on COVID right now. And uh, it seems like um, HIV and AIDS is something that is sort of like forgotten. Um, so what is being done to make sure that people continue to test um, and the cure uh, for the, or a vaccine is actually found for this um, disease? You know, I was really inspired to be here in this country and hear that vaccine studies are happening here in Tanzania. Phase one, phase two, phase three, HIV vaccine studies, wonderful work happening here. And also incredible progress over the last many years on um, reaching the UNAID, UNAIDS targets towards elimination of HIV, making sure people are tested and diagnosed, making sure people get on antiretroviral therapy, suppressed with antiretroviral therapy, and then 
have a very long life ahead of them. Um, incredible work here um, towards reaching those UNAIDS targets, and, and that work continues. And really, that, that, that work is where so much of the COVID work has also been able to leverage um, the health infrastructure that has happened has allowed um, those, those to come together. Uh, but when we look at the situation globally, what is it right now when we look at HIV and AIDS? We still have more work to do. We have still work to do in early infant diagnosis, preventing pediatrics, in um, uh, prevention of mother to child transmission, of doing more and more scale up of testing, of getting people on antiretrovirals, and of um, getting more and more people suppressed. The UNA sent 95, 95, 95 targets to get 95% of people diagnosed, 95% of people in care and on antiretrovirals, 95% of people uh, suppressed. Ambitious targets and so much progress happening in that, and especially here in Tanzania. Uh, when we look at um, the current focus right now in terms of support, uh, what is CDC? Uh, CDC's priorities right now in that area? I have had an incredibly warm welcome from His Excellency President of Zanzibar, from the um, Honorable Minister Masrui, as well as the Honor Honorable Minister Mwalimu. Um, it's been inspiring to hear of all the ways that we can partner together to work together towards implementation of programs. Um, development of science. Um, one of the things I think is critically important is the development of the infrastructure in, in health, um, whether it is training personnel, development of laboratory infrastructure, development of uh, data systems and surveillance systems so that we can work together to see where there is disease, what new disease may crop up, and then to deliver health to the Tanzanian people. And, and what I would say is my visit has just been inspiring and humbling, um, and I really look forward to continued ongoing partnerships. So this uh, support or cooperation has not in any way been impacted with the global COVID situation because I know so much focus is going in that area right now. So does it mean that the support will also be affected in one way or another? I think what's inspiring is to see how that support has been leveraged to deliver health to people, right? Um, and so if anything, I think what it has demonstrated as I went site to site and saw that there was um, vaccine, COVID vaccine administration in, our T in your TB clinics and COVID vaccine administration in, in HIV clinics. And that has been so inspiring to see that you can leverage all areas of health towards a new public health challenge. But still, there are some diseases that are, keep coming up, uh, cropping up. And uh, uh, among them is the monkeypox. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, there's Ebola still around. Uh, there's Marburg as well. Um, what is CDC doing in that area? Uh, should there be a global concern on these um, uh, uh, viruses? I think one of the things these new viruses that we're hearing about are ongoing challenging public health threats has ch challenged us with is saying we don't know what tomorrow's public health threats w um, will be and we need to be prepared. We need to be able to prevent, to detect, and to respond to anything that comes our way. And that really does mean that we need that public health infrastructure the people doing the work, the laboratory systems, the data systems to survey and detect. And it is that work that allows us to detect anything that will be able, that comes our way and to be able to respond. And uh, the vaccines already found, maybe for monkeypox right now, that, um, that are working, that can be sort of like rolled out globally? Yeah, so there are two vaccines that um, were originally for smallpox and that we believe to be working for monkeypox as well. Um, and there are vaccines that are now being deployed um, around the world in order to prevent monkeypox. Fortunately, we haven't had and seen uh, the severity of disease with monkeypox that one might have expected with smallpox, which is good news, but still a lot of morbidity and, and pain pain um, associated with this outbreak that we're working to prevent. So it's something that you feel that it can be contained? Um, we will have a lot of work to do around the world now in over 70 countries in order to contain it. Um, so it will be a continued threat. But I think as we do more and more work, um, we, will, we will work towards containing it. That's our job. OK, it was nice talking to you. Maybe just a final message to the Tanzanian viewers, uh, the uh, government leaders as well, on your visit to Tanzania? It has been inspiring. I've had a really warm, warm reception. I've been uh, so, so grateful to be able to meet with government leadership. Um, to the people of Tanzania, continue to, to uh, work towards good health. Get your COVID-19 vaccine, um, and I look forward to a return visit. We had the Director of Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, Rochelle Walensky. My name is Yvonne Msimemo saying goodbye.
CDC, saving lives, protecting people.